The following program may contain coarse language, violence, nudity, mature subject matter, or scenes which may not be suitable for all viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. All Hit Radio. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome to the X Zone, everyone. I am Rob McConnell. We're coming to you from our broadcast center and studios in St. Catharines, Ontario, Canada. And it is a Thursday, April the 6th in the year 2023. If you'd like to uh, send us an email, exxon at exxonradiotv.com on all social media sites, exxon Radio TV. And we're coming to you around the world tonight on the Talkstar Radio Network, Mutual Broadcast Network, the Exxon Broadcast Network, and on Channel 32, Simul TV, which is the Exxon TV channel. And to watch the Exxon TV channel, 724-365, visit www.simultv.com. Exxon Nation, my guest this hour is Dr. Richard Allen Miller, and he has lifelong extensive experiences in the field of physics, metaphysics, and agriculture. And uh, these are just a few of, of the doctor's um, accomplishments, to say the very least. Joining me now is Dr. Richard Allen Miller. And Dr. Miller, welcome back, Rich. Thank you. Now, before we went on air, when before we went on air, you were telling me that you had some very earth-shaking news to share with our audience tonight. Well, Please go ahead. Uh, where do I begin? Uh, you need some history. Yeah. There, every twelve thousand years, there appears to be a, an event that occurs near extinction event occurring. Every twelve thousand years, you can go into archaeology and anthropology, and you can see the soil <laughs> variations. Like well, something happened here. Right. Uh, but we don't really know because we haven't been there and there wasn't anybody to record it. Right. So it's basically on physics and geography and those kinds of things. Well, back in the early 70s, uh, right after I started working with MRU, uh, after SEAL Corp, um, there was a, a thing in Ostrander and Schroeder's books, uh, psychic discoveries behind the Iron Curtain that led me to Yugoslavia and Czechoslovakia. And I ended up at Prague uh, meeting a guy, man named Yanis, who had written a book on the lunar sex cycle of the female. Now, basically, he said that when a woman is born, an engram is put on her DNA on when she ovulates, and it changes with the face of the moon. Mm -hmm. That means that if she moves from where she was born, to another part of the earth, that ovulation cycle changed, and that gave us a new concept in our definition of space, like we have with time. It's uh, awkward to realize that all physics begins with assumptions. Uh, you know, we, we're, we're not, and, and it's only as good as our assumptions are. Sure. Uh, like the shortest distance between two points and the earth's round. But if space is curved, I can prove that the Earth is flat. Which one is it? It's the correct answer is yes, because our concept of space is like that of time. It's nebulous from St. Augustine saying time is a duration of consciousness. So we store memory. It isn't real. Neither is space. And so this new term cosmobiology came out on based on the new definition of what space is called. It will be the geometric alignment of celestial bodies. When it was astrology, uh, people felt that Uranus was a higher octave of Earth. When it became astronomy, as, a, as the way we understood it, there was no known laws on how any way that Uranus could in any way impart any action on the Earth. Yet no known laws in terms of you know radiation and things like that. However, Using a 360 computer uh, at, at uh, the University of Washington, I went back in history to vet and came up with a three sigma error coefficient on an event occurring with a certain type of geometric alignment of the celestial bodies, which, by the way, is right now. There are five bodies that are in alignment. Uh, they occur periodically through our history. Uh, this specific alignment doesn't occur except every one, every 12,000 years. And 
whether or not this means it's going to happen or not, I, I don't know. I, but I'm about as good as it gets in terms of, you know, working from the physics model point of view. And three sigma means there's a 99.9975% probability of this event occurring. And so what last fall, actually last winter, the Parker dive into the heliosphere uh, was to determine the solar minimum that was going to happen, which is a regular clockwork thing, pretty much like the moon is on our phases, except the solar minimums vary slightly differently as well as the phase of moons, like you have a blood moon and a harvest moon, and sometimes they're way out there, and sometimes the moon's closer with the full moon. Um, basically, what we've determined is there will be an event in June that will put everybody on edge because the actual event will then occur in late March, early April of 2024. Now, that doesn't mean it's going to happen, but the military, the people I work with in the Navy, are seriously uh, uh, taking my work very carefully because I've always been pretty dead on on things I did like that. I'm here to say that I don't know that it's going to happen, but basically on the West Coast, Mauna Loa, will go off because that's what these X-bands, we've had 15 X-bands off the sun since January. This never in history, recorded history, have we ever had anything of that event. One of which was the size of Fukushima that dropped, caused Fukushima to go off. Mm -hmm. That has occurred three times. And then we had one March 28th or the 30th, somewhere right around there, a huge burst, never, ever, ever uh, experienced before. And these X-bands are causing the core of Earth to stop spinning. Now, that has happened several times this century already, so that's not as big a deal as the fact that the X-bands coming off are of such quantity and such depth that it may cause our core to spin when it's a stop to spin in the opposite direction, which means we have a pole shift. Magnetic, which means, which means from positive to negative, it would be negative to positive. That's correct. Magnetic pole shift. Right. What that would do, possibly, knock on wood, hope not. Hope, of course, is the last deal in Pandora's box. Um, what will happen is then, then the Earth will slow down and begin to also rotate in the opposite direction. And if and when that happens, you can expect a near extinction event. And it'll be Mauna Loa in, on the West Coast. That's the one I'm keying on right now. When Mauna Loa goes off, it'll set off that volcano in the, out in the ocean between Hawaii and uh, I guess it's um, uh, near uh, Wairika, uh, Can uh, California. There's a volcano out in, in the ocean. It doesn't even have a name. And yet, when that volcano goes off, it's going to shift the plate five degrees. And everything west of I-5 on the interstate is gone in four hours. There will be geographical changes. You can expect them up in, in Ontario as well because of the Great Lakes. Sure. That whole region, according to our calculations, this occurs, will go underwater. And the United States and parts of Canada will be split in half. Well, that's good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wow. I didn't know I could talk about this. Oh, why not? Why, why not? Well, because there's not much you can do except hold hands and watch the big wave come in in New York City. Or be like Woody Carlson sitting there they bring it on. That's you know, right. Yeah. What, have you seen what happened at Yellowstone? Yeah. They yeah. have discovered a new kind of gas that's coming out of a super volcano with a big boil that goes off and everything's a mess and that's a hydrogen what is it i've got that i just oh it's a helium four gas just discovered and it, it goes downhill from there everything i'm finding is pointing to an event occurring 
Well, wait a second. Yeah. He, wait a second, Richard. Helium four isn't that why? Isn't that one of the uh, elements found on the moon, and that's why they want to go to the moon is to mine helium four? Well, there's a lot of different things. You got pluses and minuses, like you do with fullerenes. You put structured water inside it, and you've got an antioxidant that'll reduce radiation poisoning. However, if you put deuterium inside it, now you have building sediment. You understand that what I just said? That's in one of my chapters in the non-local mind. I talk about what Building 7 was, was an experiment during 9-11 using Lockheed's teleportation laser. Instead of putting structured water in it, which reduces radiation, if, if, if they did studies on rats and found that lethal doses of radiation could be cured using structured water in a microtubule. They call them fullerenes. And but if you don't use structured water, which is H2O3, hydrogen peroxide, with an extra oxygen molecule coming in it, you use deuterium, now you have a neutron fullerene fusion bomb. And that's what brought Building 7. And that's documented with patents, the whole thing. Lockheed, with their teleportation lasers, they could go inside the molecule and set off the deuterium. The, um, the thing that's concerning me is that even if none of this happens, the Mexican cartels are controlling our borders now down in the south. And mm -hmm. Texas has already told Biden that they're leaving the union this year because he didn't do anything about the cartels. And California are in leagues with China, which owns California. And watch what happens to your food now. These are strange and very dangerous times, my friend. That's correct. And I can't tell you what's going to happen because I'm not, I, I don't have a crystal ball. I have my gut. And I can tell you that just from what I sense, um, I don't know. I, I, you know, I'm hoping not, but I hope. I, I don't want to go there. I, you know, I want to know. And the bad news is, and this is where it gets real creepy. I could make an argument that we're in a Petri dish and we haven't even begun to understand what's really going on. Let me give you that metaphor. This is going to open your eyes a little bit. I remember when I was working Navy intelligence before Roswell kind of thing, when we had little green men. Now we have a whole host of different colors, you know, including grays and reticulum and nephilim and so on. Mm -hmm. I did a PBS series uh, a while back where they interviewed me on the Nephilim skull that was found in Pennsylvania in 1810, I think it was. He dug up this huge skull and uh, that the Navajo have at Shiprock when they, you know, they have legends about giant cannibals that, you know, ate man. And um, I don't know about that. What I do know is I saw the photo of the skull before it was sent to the Smithsonian. The Smithsonian doesn't have that skull. What happened to it? That's what PBS wanted me to interview on. And my best guess was, looking back, that was about the time Joseph Smith uh, began his journey to Utah. And that Baptist minister dogged his way all the way to Utah trying to get his flock back during that period, 1812, that, that so on. And what basically happened was his two sons were running the Smithsonian at that time. And I think they were trying to vet his father on a religion based on close encounter, because that's about the first time it started and probably dumped that skull in the ocean, Atlantic Ocean, just to vet their father. I don't know that. That was my take on it. You understand? I do. My friend. Richard, we've got to take a break. Please stand by. And so nation, our guest this hour is Dr. Richard Allen Miller. Wow. <laughs> I told you it was going to go that way. Well, <laughs> you, know, you know what, Richard? I believe that people need to know the truth. And that's why I'm happy yeah, but, that you're... You know, this is... I don't want to... I'm a scientist. Yeah. And I don't want to do that. I want to give them direction, you know? Yeah. Stand by, Richard. We've got to take a break. We'll be back on the other side of this break with Dr. Richard Allen Miller as the Exxon continues right here from my broadcast center and studios in St. Catharines, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away.
Question, what is the name of the unique blend of coffee you get that has been formulated by a neurologist, a neurobiologist, and a pharmaceutical chemist? Answer, you get Beautiful Mind Coffee, a unique coffee blend that tastes great and has herbal ingredients that your brain will love, and it is not just coffee, it's brain alicious. Dr. Rathbone, Dr. Jang, and Dr. Winslow, the scientific team that created Beautiful Mind Coffee, decided to collaborate on a coffee focusing on brain health. As for those herbal ingredients found in Beautiful Mind Coffee, Dr. Rathbone, Dr. Jang, and Dr. Winslow, utilizing their combined extensive scientific research background, worked with many natural and herbal products until the exact formulation that is found in Beautiful Mind Coffee was created. With a unique scientific formula not found in any other coffee being sold or served, Beautiful Mind Coffee is the only coffee blend that contains three herbal ingredients found to aid in boosting your daily mental clarity and focus. Every cup of Beautiful Mind Coffee contains scientifically formulated amounts of maca root powder, green tea extract, and American ginseng, all supporting good brain health. Taking care of your brain's health now can help delay or prevent the onset of cognitive dysfunction, including dementia, Alzheimer's, and more general memory loss as you get older, just by enjoying the delicious flavor of our roasted coffee and herbal ingredients found exclusively in Beautiful Mind Coffee. Did you know that cognitive dysfunction also refers to deficits in attention, verbal and non-verbal learning, short-term and working memory, visual and auditory processing, problem-solving, processing speed, and motor functioning? For more on Beautiful Mind Coffee, the three scientists who formulated Beautiful Mind Coffee, and more details on the three unique herbal ingredients in Beautiful Mind Coffee, visit www.beautifulmindcoffee.ca. Beautiful Mind Coffee is now available online at Amazon.ca and Amazon.com. To order Beautiful Mind Coffee, visit www.beautifulmindcoffee.ca today. Welcome back, everyone. Dr. Richard Allen Miller is our guest this hour. His website is richardallenmiller.com. Dr. Miller, uh, doctor, when will we know or what signs should we look for that what you're talking about tonight has started? Yeah, there, there should be some warning event sometime in June. You're going to hear more about X-bands coming off the sun. You're going to hear more about how they affect volcanoes. You're going to hear about volcanoes going off all over the world. And as that crescendo increases, then people are going to start to panic because, you know, we're going to have geographical changes. Remember, the last one connected Russia with Canada. So, you know, there, there you are. <laughs> Who knows what's going to happen? I, I can guess, but, you know. Where, where did Russia connect with Canada, sir? Up, up near Alaska. That whole, that whole connection was connected at one time. It was oh, called, I see. Where, yeah. the Bering, where the Bering Sea is. Correct. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. And there, that was the landmass that, that – that people believe that people migrated from Asia in, into Canada. And that, that's the origin, I believe, of the Eskimos in northern Canada, as well as some... Oh, you had natives up there, too. You know, the yeah. American Indian and some of the others were settled in there. Right. Northern Cheyenne have been in their location for centuries. I mean, you know. So this, this is this is hard to fathom, but I don't doubt you one bit. Well, here's, here's, here's the other part of it. I have a diary entry that I made. I'm, I keep a daily diary, which, right. by the way, I recommend as a way to get in touch with your internal self. That's, you know, self-realization. 
And I'm currently a hermetic Kabbalist on path 13 uh, on Doth, which is a temporary thing in Kabbalah. It's, you know, it's like a, a little stone that nobody sees under a roaring sea where you leap over on, onto the rock to leap over to the other side. It's temporary. It's the only place in the tree where knowledge has actually become wisdom. And I don't know what that all means because I'm just, you know, a high priest in knowledge, but not wisdom. I'm just a young kid. And I, okay. So my diary entry goes something like this. When Ask AI came out, I went, wait a minute. That's not Google anymore. That's the idea that when you ask a question to Google, you get a whole array of possibilities. Right. Ask AI only gives you one answer. Hmm. And that's because it gives you the answer you were looking for. Now, what do you think that's going to do? Well, Kurzweil talks about the singularity, you know, 2047. And when, you know, mankind essentially, that, by the way, has been moved up to 2027. And that's when the U.S. government no longer exists, according to the people I work with. And uh, there's going to be chaos because China owns California now, all of course. China owns 40% of Oregon, and I'm not even going to talk about the state of Washington where I grew up. I at one time thought I was going to move into the Okanagan and hide out up in Canada, probably around 100 miles or something like, like that, you see. And now with requiring job, which they've already, basically, we have two races on the earth right now. We have Homo sapien and Homo GMO. And both could be seen as extinct species like Cro-Magnon and Neanderthal. And because the Neanderthal or Homo GMO is leaking, they're gonna kill off what remains of Homo sapien, Cro-Magnon. And both are extinct and the world views of what I'm doing as a model. Mm -hmm. And that's because what basic, and this is just a metaphor now, what if the future is homo mutant and they're even as more ruthless as you can imagine compared to what we have now for our management in the earth? Now, if that's true, why would they want to dumb us down like they're doing with education and our children? When I went to grade school, when I was still in the Philippines till third grade, in second grade, I learned Latin. Summa sust, summa sust sunt. Now, why do they no longer offer shop and leaving no kid behind? And what a look at what they're doing in Oregon. Our new governor is openly gay. What do you think she's going to do with our primary education? There's enough problems right now trying to do gender to figure out what's going on with the veil of ISIS and who knows what that all means. So what I'm going on this is, supposing the future is so ruthless that, well, Cro-Magnon and Neanderthal are saying, why don't we just put them in a matrix and have them dumb them down over a period of time, which is illusion, mm -hmm. and make them mine gold for our Dyson sphere needs as a metaphor. Now, with that said, that sounds like a good sci-fi script, doesn't it? It does. I did, yeah, I wrote early X-Files too, did you know that? No, I didn't. <laughs> I did the workup and I did the first eight episodes and I refused to move to Hollywood. That's why they brought Carter in and used me on set as an expert. I'm the real Fox Molnar. Why? Bernard Shercliffe was my editor, a, a, a literary agent, and uh, taught me how to write a screenplay I did it with my weirdness and physics, and out came the uh, PSYOPs team. That was my first workup. It had eight individuals, including Iron Claw, who was my tracker, like I used to use when I did after things after Bigfoot and, you know, Wendigo and all the other common names that it has on down. I can tell you the Oregon Vortex is a uh, mini black hole because I flew over it with a PBY at 15, 18,000 feet and was measuring with an interferometer at what, what, what curved space and, and light at 18,000 feet. 
Okay, that that you know so-called ley lines. That's what I was doing for the military in the seventies. In the eighties, I created in my own wormhole and took twelve scientists from NASA to Mars. You can't travel in normal space. I was in mission control in nineteen seventy-one. What do you think I'm learning? Yeah. So I know I don't know, but I could say that our future management in Earth is just as weird. Even way more, and we call them Homo Mutant. How's that one? And I wrote another screenplay about Homo Lumen. That's an interesting concept. But basically, X Files. Uh, why I, I did the workup? They said there were too many people. They weren't sure that that uh, alien. Uh, you know, they weren't sure that eight individuals were going to go as a screenplay. So what they did is they had me shorten it down into two. And so I had to throw one in with forensics and one with his imagination. And off they went with two, Cully and Scully. And but, but I can tell you what happened was after the eight episodes and it started to go well, then they wanted me to move to Hollywood. And I'd already done a tour with swingers. I don't need to do that. That's not what I do. You know, I'm a moral man. How did Ducky Mallard put that? An ethical man knows not to cheat on his wife. A moral man won't. Same thing with purpose and intent. They're different. And I walked away. I don't care if it was a fortune or not. I didn't want to play. I don't want to play with Hollywood. Now they're in trouble because of what's happening now with AIs. You know, they're going to start marketing plays that are written by artificial intelligence. Watch what happened to Hollywood then. Yeah, anyway. Is this, so all, is this all part of, of the new shift, the new paradigm that people have been talking about for years? Yeah. Imagine you don't have to do anything but lay in bed, eat your Dorito corn chips. How did Jay Leno put it? Oh, don't worry, we'll make more. Uh, you know, <laughs> you, you don't do anything because your robot vacuums under your bed and uh, scratches your back where it may itch two night into Jay and Fitch, played in Romeo, working Dex, Punch and Judy, Jim and Dex. That's my memory. And I can tell you, yeah. I have an eidetic memory. That's the bad. That's the bad and goodness. Thank you, Lord. I once I see something, I've got it forever. I can look at, close my eyes, twenty years from now, and see between your white hair that one mole. And uh, <laughs> which one? <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, but uh, I know we wouldn't want to get too serious here. We want to keep this light because I think we're going to be witnessing the end of an epoch, which is okay in the sense that death is not what you think it is, and so it isn't going to be a terrible thing necessarily. It's just definitely going to be traumatic. Well, what, 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 is, what is death then? If it's not what we think, Rich. I don't know. I haven't done it. I, had, I spent two weeks in the jungles with even Alexander yeah. and talking about him being, you know, a little fly on his thing and a dead sister talking to him and things like that. I, 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 I can tell you that reincarnation isn't real any more than several of the studies I did for the military way back when included other kinds of life forms that intercrop with humans. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's shapeshifters. There's one down here in Oregon that's over 400 years old. You have Wendigo up in Canada. Yeah. There's all kinds of different entities. What about the Dalai Lama? Is a little boy saying, no, I didn't wear that hat, I wore that hat. Can you do that? Who, who can do that? Mm -hmm. Well, obviously something that's not quite, you know, they've done videos, movies. Denzel Washington did one with a demon that jumped from one person to another. I and, remember that movie, yeah. Yeah, and then another one he did was uh, the one that I'm most interested in, like Nomads, that was Pierce Brosnan, yeah. where he was, uh, uh, there, there's uh, these entities that come out at night, they're, they're not human, and they're kind of like something else. That was called Nomads, mm -hmm. and that's a worthwhile watch, because Grandfather Joseph Montagua, who was Hopi, had what we call a writer on him. That's a recorder. How did I find out about that one? It started with the death of Jim Morrison in... Um, in Paris, 
he didn't actually die. And one of the projects that'll be in a book I write called Spook Central, if I'm allowed to finish my writings before I turn into a worm chasing. Um, basically, Jim Morrison uh, was entered the crossroads uh, when he was 10 years old, when grandfather Joseph Fantango died. Now, he was a Hopi medicine man. I got a pipe from Thomas Banaka when I was doing that study because what made him different was that he had a neutral entity that is basically a recorder that goes from one person to the next to continually re re record what's going on in history. And uh, Mantangua was a Hopi medicine man, very, but, but he had this entity that was with him, didn't interfere or do anything different, it's just recording. And when he died, Jim Morrison was the closest person to him, and that got transferred over to his body. And how I found out about that is Jim Morrison didn't die in Paris. He was smuggled out of Paris by this uh, Swedish Secret Service. I have CIA letterhead that I'll be including in my book for validation photos and things like that. And I went and found a fat Jim Morrison working for a laser company down in uh, New Orleans. I don't know if he's dead now, but if he is, then someone else has got that writer. When, when, when he dies, it transfers over to the nearest entity that's a certain age and something like that. I don't know how that all works. I just, these are different kinds of life forms that wow. intercrawl. Like we have weeds <laughs> or something. All right. All right, Richard, stand by, my friend. We've got to take our next break. Exonation. Nation, Dr. Richard Allen Miller is my guest, www.richardallenmiller.com. This is the Exxon. I'm Rob McConnell, and the good doctor and I return after this very short break. Don't go away. Explanation, uh, Dr. Richard Allen Miller's our guest. His website is richardallenmiller.com. Richard, th there are those who believe that we live in a holographic, ex uh, you know, existence. I'm glad you mentioned that. That was a field theory I came up with 50 years ago. I was working with Old Man DuPont in Wilmington, and I looked at door, walking down the hall, and there was this open door, and I saw a three-dimensional color TV. That was Gabor. He um, had, where's that in our marketplace? 
I saw it. <laughs> yeah. And that's Gabor got a Nobel Prize in 1972, one month before I actually wrote the field theory on the holographic universe. And today, I'm writing a brand new field theory to supersede that, that my mentor, Stan Krippner, thinks is going to take me to Stockholm. Stay tuned. Who knows? What I do know is they made a breakthrough. Two Russian biologists made a breakthrough on the proton cloud. And the DNA is a resonant cavity oscillator, quoting from papers of mine that I wrote in 1973 that would have taken me to, to the Stockholm, except after Gabor went in 72, except that my work was then classified immediately as top secret. I presented two papers in Claremont. That was the one on embryonic holography as DNA as a resonant cavity oscillator. And the other was Project Parafile, the first demonstration of an AI. And uh, they weren't interested in that one. They were interested in the embryonic holography, which was not released until 92, 1992. And two Russian scientists at that time, Gary Ayev, and Popoff were quoting from that and got nominated for a Nobel Prize. And th there are the two that are quoting from that were students under them, and they're down in, in um, Max Rumpel and, and several others. That they're quoting from my literature from 1992 that was released that I wrote in 1972. And when they came up to interview me, this concept of the proton cloud was so enlightening that I got interested and was able, oh, you know, and blah, blah, blah. And what happened next was they don't have the math. I do. I'm a polymath. And it started tumbling in on me. I'm going to be using a virtual form of Kaufman's knot theory. There are basically you take string theory, which has got 10 strings and an 11th, which acts as a wormhole or interconnecting of the 10. And then I'll be your little boy scout tying knots in them. <laughs> you know, just, well, that's what knot theory is about. And Kaufman's thing talks about the multiverse. Uh, the multiverse is the space between when a proton is a particle and when it becomes a wave. And that's where your multiverse lies and all the different possibilities of what you did by forgetting to send me a link and wasn't able to do my show tonight and how many <laughs> and how many worlds and universes got affected by that and how it changed just right. well that's what the multiverse is all the things you didn't do that made your god's favorite choice uh, and, okay okay but where does where does the holographic because uh, the holographic was based on information and inf see quantum mechanics had space and time as your measurement unit. Right. And what happens is when you take an analog system and you digitize it, you increase uncertainty. The more you know, Heisenberg, the more you know about one thing, the less you know about something else. You can't get there from here using space and time. They're constructs, they're not real. So I thought, came up with the concept, well, information, let's do that. And that was on fractal mathematics, Ben Mandelbrot, Julia, or a May generator creates on the way information collapses down in itself or expands in itself. And we had a way of describing strings and the 10 dimensions. Well, what happens is there's an axiom in our, our postulate in information theory that states simply, if you have enough information to ask a coherent question, you have enough information to answer it. The framing of the way you ask the question is where the answer lies. And so that sets up another kind of uncertainty. You can't get there from here. You can get close. Simon says you can go halfway to the door. <laughs> so based on the limitation of our ability to conceptualize. That's why chapter eight in the non-local mind is called the mind's eye, where imagination is reality. If you can see it in your mind's eye, mm -hmm. that's what makes it real, not my mouth. All right, stand by, Richard. We have to take a final break. And uh, Dr. Richard Allen Miller and I return as we wrap up this hour here in the X Zone from our broadcast center and studios in St. Catharines, Ontario. Now, if you'd like to find out more about uh, Dr. Miller and his books, of which we're going to be talking about his books when we come back, visit his website, richardallenmiller.com. I'll be back with Dr. Miller. Don't go away.
So I was watching the X-Zone TV channel last night when I was abducted by aliens, and they kept repeating to me over and over again, Simultv.com, Simultv.com. What's Simultv.com? That's what I asked them. They had it written on the side of their UFO. How do you spell that? UFO. No, I mean Simultv.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Right. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Interesting that you were abducted by aliens in a Simultv.com UFO last night. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Now that you mention it, I remember now last night I was awakened from a deep sleep. My great-grandmother was standing there. She said she'd come from the hereafter to tell me about Simultv.com. She even spelled it out for me. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com, sonny boy. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com, sonny boy. Wow. Yeah. Guys, you'll never guess what my psychic guru just told me. SIMULTV.com. Exactly. Are you guys psychic too? Of course. We all know about SIMULTV.com. SIMULTV.com. Dr. Hi. Richard Allen Miller is our special guest. Go ahead, Rich. I don't want to get on that. I'd like to see that TV. It looks like it's going to be fun. It is. Yeah, nice fun. Nice going. Um, thanks, Rich. Um, you know, the time goes by so fast when you're with us. Uh, how can we wrap up the, 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 the conversation when it comes to what to look for? When it comes I think to the bad news. That everybody should begin a victory garden right now. No matter what else is going to happen, fruit is going to become, no matter what else is going to happen, fruit is going to become your primary expense, not housing. You can count on it. Okay, that's a given. And just a little indoor aquaculture system, size your bed with lights above it, a closet, less than a closet size, is enough to feed 10 people all winter. Wow. You know, you, they're very efficient now. The LED lighting is uh, each crop, broccoli, cauliflower, have their own bandwidth of light that they require. And mm -hmm. so not only are they extremely limiting and functional that way, lighting, normal lighting, 90% of it's lost than heat. These are run for essentially nothing. You know, they're, they're easy to run. You can have a bicycle power. You know, just riding a bicycle will power up your generator for mm. a couple of hours. Now, Richard, is all this information in your new book? Yes. Well, I'm writing lots of books. Here, check this one out. That what I'm writing now, now is The Diamond Body. Then it will be Electromagic and Yogatronic. That's part of the Diamond Body series. Now, The Diamond Body is when I moved the uh, Manager Foundation in Topeka, Kansas to the University of Washington and added uh, uh, video feedback to it, creating cymatics concept and how light and sound affect human behavior. Then in 1979, I used Mora and Indomet, German acupuncture equipment on the top of the forehead to bypass the need to take mushrooms or drugs. Drugs are basically uh, toxins, but they have a chemistry that's very similar to, but slightly different than your neurotransmitter. And it's your immune system that freaks out and overproduces lysergic acid amides that take the LSD, the diethylamide, it's gone. And the 20 hours of hallucination is directly related to the which neurotransmitter is released. That's in 79 I did that. And then I can create any high using electric currents on the forehead. And then I went took a bunch of scientists to Mars, creating my own wormhole by using sacred geometry from the first study and the electromagic from the other test, specifically release exact precise neurotransmitter that created the wormhole. But let me ask you this, Richard, because time is going by very fast. If you were able to take 10 scientists from Earth to Mars and then Mars to back without all the, all the, things that nasa has to do why doesn't nasa just listen to you and yeah, the, the astronauts when 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 ed mitchell went around the moon just the reason they have this precision on countdown five four the reason they do that is they have to punch a hole through the van allen belt to get the astronaut through it or you have a challenger event page two just going around the moon and back 
Uh, Mitchell's never going to have children again. He's never, his lifespan has been reduced to almost half. Uh, and going down, space, as we understand space, is toxic. There's no way we could go to Mars and back. All experiments that way, using normal space, kills people. So you have a different way. And that's like astral projection, remote viewing, and or shoving, soul travel. You know, like uh, Paul Twitchell and your people up, I can cover that kind of group, or Satangi. And there's other wormholes. There are all different kinds of them. And that's what I discovered, because your brain is a subtle body like your gut that dialogues with subtle bodies outside the physical. That's your multiverse. And when I watched a woman rip a car door off once to save her daughter in a flaming automobile. Now, that's impossible. The adrenaline didn't make her body and bone and muscle stronger than steel. How could she do that? Well, the model I'm using is that was not her from this universe. It was her from a different universe where the laws of physics are different. Right. And everybody, that's how I'm going to be doing the next level of trying to explain paranormal phenomena. Page seven on that. I'm guessing there will never be a theory of everything because we're not getting closer to understanding things. We're getting better. Richard, you and I have to say so long for tonight, but listen, buddy, I want you to come back. I really enjoy listening to you. And, yeah. I want to thank, and I want to thank you for all the great work that you've done over the years and how you've contributed your lifetime to mankind. Once thank again, you. Exonation, Dr. Richard Allen Miller has been my guest this hour. Visit his website, buy his books. Uh, the man is a living legend. And um, I don't know about that. oh yes, you are. Come on, you're you're you're, you're too modest. www.richardallenmiller.com, and I'll be back on the other side of this break as we continue here in the X Zone after the news at the top of the hour at six and a half minutes past. Right here, don't go away. Question, what is the name of the unique blend of coffee you get that has been formulated by a neurologist, a neurobiologist, and a pharmaceutical chemist? Answer, you get Beautiful Mind Coffee, a unique coffee blend that tastes great and has herbal ingredients that your brain will love, and it is not just coffee, it's brain alicious. Dr. Rathbone, Dr. Jang, and Dr. Winslow, the scientific team that created Beautiful Mind Coffee, decided to collaborate on a coffee focusing on brain health. As for those herbal ingredients found in Beautiful Mind Coffee, Dr. Rathbone Dr. Jang, and Dr. Winslow, utilizing their combined extensive scientific research background, worked with many natural and herbal products until the exact formulation that is found in Beautiful Mind Coffee was created. With a unique scientific formula not found in any other coffee being sold or served, Beautiful Mind Coffee is the only coffee blend that contains three herbal ingredients found to aid in boosting your daily mental clarity and focus. Every cup of Beautiful Mind Coffee contains scientifically formulated amounts of maca root powder, green tea extract, and American ginseng, all supporting good brain health. Taking care of your brain's health now can help delay or prevent the onset of cognitive dysfunction, including dementia, Alzheimer's, and more general memory loss as you get older, just by enjoying the delicious flavor of our roasted coffee and herbal ingredients found exclusively in Beautiful Mind Coffee. Did you know that cognitive dysfunction also refers to deficits in attention, verbal and nonverbal learning, short-term and working memory, visual and auditory processing, problem-solving, processing speed, and motor functioning. For more on Beautiful Mind Coffee, the three scientists who formulated Beautiful Mind Coffee, and more details on the three unique herbal ingredients in Beautiful Mind Coffee, visit www.beautifulmindcoffee.ca. Beautiful Mind Coffee is now available online at amazon.ca and amazon.com. To order Beautiful Mind Coffee, visit www.beautifulmindcoffee.ca today.